but um, nothing, nothing spectacular. Instead, what I figured I'd do, because I'm kind of walking around telling everyone about it, so I figure I'll, I'll tell you. I hope you can see me. The light's up here. I'm looking down. That's not really conducive, but um, well, when I went to Disney a couple weeks ago, um, I sort of had this somewhat of a, like a little minor epiphany, I'll call it, as I was looking at the Disney World castle, which I uh, learned was one of the most photographed objects on planet Earth. And I was noticing how everybody was taking their photos, which is the same way that I take photos, you know, or for film. Um, that, I, you know, you take the photo and then you look down to see if, if it came out good, you know, and then you'll take another and another, however, until you get the right shot or you might change, change angles, whatever. Um, and then that same trip I saw those disposable wind-up cameras that you used to get. You'd take like, you know, 24 photos or whatever, and then you'd put them in the uh, little thing at CVS and they would develop your photos. And I thought about how different of an experience that is, and this is obviously very obvious to those of you who are older than me, and I mean, I lived through that when I was a child. Um, but the juxtaposition is still, uh, I think just as effective because it wasn't that long ago when you'd put film, uh, to send it off to get developed. And sometimes you wouldn't see your photos for until weeks later. And I thought about how much of a different relationship we had with memories and photos when we couldn't immediately get that gratification, when we couldn't immediately see them, because I was watching people take a picture of the castle you know, they're capturing a memory. They're, 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 this is a, a moment that they want to live in. And then they look down and they have an opportunity to edit that moment before they even can separate themselves from the moment. So they're editing a memory before they can even look back at it. So there's almost zero sense of nostalgia. And, uh, you know, you, you might... By almost the definition of nostalgia... Um, it, th what makes it beautiful is the fact that it is unedited, you know, it's pure, it's untouchable. It's, it's something that you can't go back and fix. And so, uh, you know, long story short, I was really inspired by that, that idea because especially now as I'm in my fifth year of doing these videos, obviously I've sort of, um, hoard out, uh, the idea of digital filmmaking and not to say it's bad. It's just my relationship with it is incredibly different. You know, I think of, um, you know, purchasing a medium, a device to film on, and then I have unlimited uh, footage, you know, it's free. So why not just capture as much as possible? And I do, you know, I have terabytes and terabytes of footage on hard drives at this point. And it's all virtually meaningless in a certain way. I'm going to go back and look at very little of it. Uh, you know, so it's it's different. So, so the idea of, of doing something film was really intriguing. So anyways, I, I know that this in, um, mom, if you're watching this, you can please correct me in the comments, but she had this old Pentax K1000 laying around, which is actually a camera that's sought after by even today's photographers because it's a great starter camera. And I believe I might be misremembering this, but, uh, this was actually a camera that she used in high school. It's that old. Um, it is in fantastic condition. So it's, it's a completely all mechanical, uh, camera. There's no electronics in it with the exception of a light meter inside that helps you get exposure. Um, and there's a little button battery at the bottom. Now, from what I could tell from like, you know, eBay, um, listings, cause I was just curious if this was worth anything. It's nothing astounding, but, um, it's, it's difficult to find old ones, you know, where the, the, the battery isn't corroded inside of here and it was in great shape. So long story short, got a new button battery for it, went and found some 35 millimeter film, which is a little bit harder to find than you'd think today. I had to go to three different, uh, CVSs in two different States to find it. Um, still available widely online for the most part, but anyways, I got some film and I got a button battery and I've been taking pictures with it, um, for about two, almost three weeks. Now I have, uh, about three rolls that I've sent out to be developed. And the funny part about it is that um, when I send it off to be developed, first of all, not all, you know, Rite Aid, most of these places don't do it anymore. So you got to call around and find who will do it. They don't do it in house, obviously. So the days of like one hour photo don't exist, at least not for film. And um, it takes about two weeks. So I haven't gotten any, I haven't seen any photos from this yet. And I've taken a lot, you know, I've taken a lot of cool photos. And I haven't seen any of them. So there might be a light leak in this camera or something, and they might all be overexposed or who knows. But um, I've still been having fun shooting it. 
But I, even when I called around to find who develops film, there was a, a girl who had actually no idea what I was talking about. She didn't even know there was a service that was offered. And so again, it's just the t how times have changed. Um, but immediately I find the relationship with what I'm capturing to change quite dramatically in terms of, you know, I have 36 exposures per roll um, and each roll is about $10 and then it's about $7, uh, you know, seven to $15 to get it developed depending on several circumstances. So I don't have just free will. Like, I'm not going to just take duplicates. I'm not going to go up to an object and there's just more time. There's more thought put into it. You know, I really think about what I want to shoot. I take a long time to get a shot of it. And then I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Um, I already have forgotten most of the photos that I took on that first roll. So when I get that stack of photos, when they finally come back, there's going to be a whole excitement, a whole new relationship with each one of those photos. And so even if they're bad, there's a certain level of effort. And it's also because I can't even remember the memory that I captured. It's going to be fresh. You know, I might have like, oh, I forgot I took that photo. You know, it's been so long and um, I'm seeing it for the first time. So for me, it's it's a very it's an opposite experience where, like I said previously, I buy the medium, you know, the device to capture the medium on. And then the uh, the actual medium that it's captured on is completely free. Well, it's almost the reverse of this where this camera I didn't buy, it was laying around, but I'm having to buy the medium. So it's limited. So, you know, they say um, limitation is creativity's best friend. And um, it's been interesting. So anyways, that's what's been inspiring me a lot lately is just taking it. And um, as I further explore, there's different types of films. I found a cool company called, I don't think it's Lumosity, because that's something else I'm pretty sure. But I forget what it is. It's a website. They still make 35 millimeter film. They make these different uh, color processed films so you can get different effects and things. So if this camera works as well as I'm hoping it does, um, I'll probably get some fun rolls. And the best part too is that I'm not going to digitize any of it. I might maybe a couple here and there. But the other great part is is m m all my work I've always put up online for everyone to see. And these this, these photos are just, just for me. They're just for me in my little photo album. And anyone who wants to see them... I have to go show them. And so that's kind of a special moment that I get to have with with the work itself, which is something that I, I, I don't necessarily get with, with what I do currently with the video. So a little fun um, experiment, you know, just trying something new. It's been very inspiring. And I'd love to maybe in the future do something with video film. Um, that's probably less likely. I have a tiny bit of experience with it. And frankly, I found it to be kind of a pain in the, in the ass. Um, anyways... So that's my long-winded video. Uh, this is sort of a replacement of um, the daily for today, I guess. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. This is um, this is 200 speed film. So this is probably not going to be able to expose, but I'll try it anyways. And uh, I'm going to try to take a photo right here of this camera. Good night.